Welcome to the St. Michael Easter podcast series. My name is Tim Smith, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Easter is big love. God's holy work is fulfilled in the resurrection of Christ, the defeat of death itself. We have received the gift of new life, and we can use that gift to spread God's big love to those near and far. Joining Christians everywhere during this Easter season, we proclaim with joy, Alleluia, the Lord is risen. Come, let us adore him, Alleluia. A reading from Hebrews chapter six, verses 13 to 20. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. So after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Here ends the reading. In our scripture today, the author of Hebrews speaks of the promises God made to Abraham, of which we are recipients today. In other words, we are meant to believe and hold on to the promises Abraham believed. Those promises were threefold and are found in Genesis chapter 12, Genesis 15, and Genesis 22. They can be summarized by two statements, that Abraham would have many descendants and that his offspring would bless all nations. Paul reflected on God's promises to Abraham when he wrote, it does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one and to your offspring, who is Christ. It is through Jesus Christ that God came to initiate the kingdom of God. And it is through Jesus Christ's death and resurrection that we are offered new life, eternal life, right here and right now, and the hope of the life to come. Just as Abraham waited for 25 years for God's promise of a child to be fulfilled, so too we now wait for Christ's return and the full realization of the kingdom of God and God's reign here on earth. In the meantime, we live into that hope which carries us through both triumph and tragedy. Hope. Hope is indeed powerful. In his book, Man's Search for Meaning, psychiatrist and Holocaust survivor Viktor Frankl articulates the necessity of hope through his time spent as a prisoner at various concentration camps during World War II. Frankl came to observe that hope is a choice. For those who choose hope, they survived. But for those who had given up hope, they did not. Hope, it appears, is capable of sustaining life, and it is capable of helping people to overcome. It is this one single act of internal defiance, no matter what we face, that can counteract everything. This is what the season of Easter celebrates. It is about the power of the resurrection to defeat even death itself. And it allows us to stand firm in the midst of life's greatest challenges, clinging to that hope. It is literally what carries us through. There's an old story of a little third grade girl named Emma who walked into class one day only to discover that there was a pop quiz. It was only one question, on what do hibernating bears subsist this winter? Emma thought long and hard until she finally wrote down these words. Hibernating bears subsist through winter on the hope of a coming spring. 
It is in the midst of difficult times, sometimes against all odds, even death itself, that we cling to the hope of God's promise of eternal life, and that death indeed has been defeated, and that acts as an anchor for our soul, knowing that we are both safe and secure in God's promises and loving arms. Adam Hamilton tells the story of having just finished preaching in worship, and one of his associate pastors leaned over, passing him a note. He opened it, and it read, Duncan and Hannah's son, George, has just died in an accident. They're on their way to the airport. They can be reached at this number later tonight. George had just graduated from college. He was taking a trip to celebrate, and while hiking, lost his footing and slipped falling to his death. When Adam finally was able to reach out by phone later that night, he could hear the pain in Duncan's voice. Adam told him that he wished he could be there and just hold him. He expressed how terribly sorry he was for George's death and how he wished he had just the right words to say what would make it okay. And then Adam writes, I'll never forget the words that he said to me. Adam, There's only one thing that's holding me together right now. It's a set of words that I memorized when I was a child in church. Adam asked, what were those words, Duncan? He then recited the promises found in the Apostles' Creed. When he got to the concluding words, he paused and his voice broke as he said with pain-filled conviction, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. And then after a long pause, Doug said, Pastor, that's all that's holding me together right now. That's what the promises of God found in Scripture bear witness to. It helps us to remember God's promises in the midst of our deepest wounds and challenges. It reminds us of what is true. It captures many of the foundational beliefs upon which our lives are built. And it gives us hope, hope to sustain, hope to endure, hope to carry on, and hope to overcome. No matter what you may be facing in your life right now, may you be greatly encouraged by the hope of Easter season and the big love found in the cross, the promise of forgiveness and eternal life. And may it act as an anchor, keeping you firm and secure in the loving embrace of the promises of God. And may you share that hope with others in their time of need. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory. You have exalted your Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen.